In my opinion, the crop effect is the most underrated tool in Premiere Pro, and after all, some of the most simple tools can do the most useful things. So let's show you some creative ways on how you can use a crop effect inside of Premiere Pro. Let's jump on in. Since Premiere Pro's update of version 25 and above, you can now find the crop effect from the properties panel. So if you select this adjustment layer here and I wanna crop the top 14% and the bottom 14%, you can see that the crop is automatically applied. You can also click here to go to the crop tool and you can actually move it inside the program monitor just like this, which is really useful. We can also still go to the effects panel and search crop and drag and drop it onto any clip in our timeline, go to effect controls, and then you can apply a crop this way. The only benefit of using this method is you also have the edge feathering. With that said, I'm gonna go to a vertical workspace here, and let's show you how to use the crop effect to create split screens. So I'm gonna click on new item here, create a new sequence. I'm gonna go to social and create a nine by 16, 30 frames per second, and I'll just call this split vertical. I have two video clips here. Let me drag them into the timeline keep existing settings because I want the sequence to remain vertical and I'm gonna drag this one on top here. So with the clips in my timeline, I want to reposition the clip so it's in a split. So with this top one selected, I can go to properties and I can just use these controls here to reposition it up and I can select the bottom clip and reposition it down. Now let's say I wanna make one of them bigger and crop. So let's say this one, I want to scale it up a bit and bring it down, but I want it to be an equal split, right? So you can see that I have a ruler up here. If you select the program monitor and go to view, you wanna make sure to show rulers and guides are checked on. So you'll see on the rulers that it's from zero to 100. So I can click up here and drag this down to 50 right? So that's the midpoint that I want the split to be at. So what I need to do is use the crop effect on this top clip to make sure it's at that 50%. So I can go down here and select crop, and then I can move the bottom crop to be at exactly 50%. Another thing you might want to do is add a little solid line between the two clips. So what we can do here is actually click on our timeline and go to the shape tool, go to the rectangle tool, and we can just draw a little skinny rectangle over this line like so. And then from the properties panel, we can change our fill to whatever color we want, press okay. And then probably what I wanna do is go back to the selection tool and just make this a little bit skinnier. So here's our final split. And remember, you can apply this same technique to any aspect ratio. All right, so this is pretty basic, right? But what if we wanna animate the crop to reveal some text? So I'm gonna create a new sequence. This time I'm gonna do 1080p, 30 frames per second, and let's call this reveal text. And I'm gonna go back into editing. Let's select the type tool here and let's type out some text, reveal. What I'm gonna do is select it, make sure that it's center aligned, and then I can use the align and transform tools to align it center horizontally and align it center vertically. So that way it's smack dab in the middle. What we wanna do right now is change the color first, and then I'll show you how to animate. If you didn't know this, if you go to fill, you can actually change it from solid to a linear or radial gradient. So if I do linear gradient here, I can select this first color and let's choose like a bright pink color. And then you can click on the second color and let's do like an orange color. And you can change the angle if you want it to be a different direction, but I'm gonna keep mine at 90. All right, so we have our gradient and we have our graphic layer and our timeline. So what if we wanna add some animation here? When we select our text layer in our timeline, you'll notice that there's no crop tool for text effects coming up in the properties panel. And because I wanna use the edge feathering, let's use the effect version of the crop effect. So let's go to effects, search for crop, and here it is. Drag and drop it or double click to apply it to your text. Now let's go to effect controls and you'll now see that we have the crop effect here. You'll also notice that we have a crop effect underneath the motion controls. We're not gonna use that version, we're gonna use this crop effect. So if it's confusing for you, you can just close that on up so you don't even see it. So to start, we're gonna decide what direction we want the animation to be in. So in this case, I wanna animate the bottom. So what I'm gonna do here is just take this parameter and move it up 
just above our text so we don't see it. And what we can do here is set a keyframe by clicking on that stopwatch. And then we can move forward to when we want it to be revealed and bring this back down, just like so by reducing this back down. So now between these two points, it's revealed. Now, what if we want to have a little bit of edge feathering? What we can do is go over here and we can use this parameter to change the feathering to be a different amount. So let's do about 100 and let's see how this looks. There's our reveal looking nice. So if we want this to be our in animation, we can actually take this little blue handle up here and drag it to encompass this in animation. And I'll tell you why this is useful in just a moment. Another thing we can do to make our animation uh, more curved and not so linear, if we open up this bottom animation, we can control click on this and choose ease in, and then we can choose ease out. So now it's a curve. So now the animation is a little bit more smooth. Now let's do our out animation. So what we can do here is go to the point where we want our out animation to start. And this time we can select the top parameter. So let's go ahead and click on the top to create our first keyframe. And then we can go to where the animation ends, right about here. And then to make it easier, let's select the crop effect. And then we can move our top down. So now it animates down and we can adjust these two keyframes so that way it's a little bit longer of an animation and once again we can do control click ease out ease in and move our out handle to the end here so now it animates down and it animates down and out. So the reason why I created these handles is if you notice, there's these white handles here in the timeline. So now no matter how long we make this animation, the in and out animations stay the same. Now this is useful if you wanna turn this into a motion graphics template that you can reuse over and over again. You can control click on this and export as a motion graphics template and call this reveal text. And rather than saving it to your local drive, you can save it to your local templates folder. And then you can go ahead and make sure to include video preview, press OK. So now if we go to window and go to graphics templates, you will now see our reveal text is here. And you can see a preview animation of what that looks like. So you can go ahead and drag and drop this into any future timeline and update the colors, the font, and that animation will remain the same, which is really useful. If you wanna access these Mograts that I've created, you can join my Patreon, which I've put a link down below. Now, this was a pretty basic animation. If you want some more complex animations, but you don't know how to animate or you don't have the time to do it, you can try out Storyblock's vast library of templates. Whether you use Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, they have a template for you. For example, here I can go to video templates and search for lower thirds. And if you go to filters, you can choose by the particular software that you need. And as you can see, there are a ton of different options to choose from. But my favorite thing about Storyblocks is their plugin. So from the Storyblocks plugin, if I need to find some templates, I can just use the search field here to search for glow titles. And here, a bunch of different glow title options come up. And once you find the one you want, if you wanna get a closer look at it, you can just click on it and get a bigger view. And then you can click download and it downloads ready to use in your project. So you don't have to go to the web browser and then back to Premiere Pro. So then I can add this to my timeline and customize it further using the properties panel. So you can update the font and the text to make it your own and reuse it in as many different projects as you want. There are millions of creative assets to explore from stock video to music to sound effects. Go explore it for yourself using my link below or go to storyblocks.com slash premiere gal. Thanks to Storyblox for sponsoring this video and now let's go into the next crop effect. So we animated the crop effect to do a text reveal. What if we want to do it to create a transition between two different video clips? So I have this stock video clip on video layer two and another one on video layer one. And I want to create a crop wipe to reveal the bottom video clip. So what I'm going to do is go to effects and search for the crop effect and drag it onto our top clip. And the reason why I'm using the effect version is because I wanna use the edge feathering in this case. So now from the left parameter, I'm going to click on the stopwatch to create my first keyframe. And then I'm gonna to move to the end of the clip right about here, and I'm going to increase the percentage to be 100. So once again, we can make our animation more smooth by going ease out and ease in just like before. 
And I want to add an edge feathering. So if I move the playhead to reveal the bottom clip, we can better see the edge feathering. So I'm going to increase this and I'm going to make it actually more than 100, let's say about 200. So it's a little bit more smooth. So now between these two points, we have a quick reveal. If you want it to be slower, just move this over and it's a bit slower. Let's say we want to add a whoosh sound effect to go along with our transition. This is where we can go to story blocks and let's go to sound effects and let's search for whoosh. We can play back a few of them until we find the one that we want. I like this one. Let's try this. Let's go ahead and download it and it will automatically appear in my project panel ready to go. So let's drag and drop this down. And then we can use the waveform to line it up with the animation. Select our video clip with the crop effect. Let's go back to effect controls. Right now we're at our first keyframe. So let's move over our sound effect by pressing option and the left arrow key over a little bit. And then we may have to make it a little bit faster to go along with the sound effect. And there we go. Another thing you might want to do is create cinematic letter boxes on top of your footage. So what we can do is go to project, go down to this little new item tool, go to adjustment layer, press OK, drag and drop the adjustment layer on top of your footage. And now we can use the properties panel just to create a top crop and a bottom crop. And so now we have our letter boxes just like that. If you want to animate the letter boxes, you can also use the properties panel to create keyframes as well. So for example, if you want the letter boxes to come in here, you can create a keyframe at this point for the top and the bottom. And then we can go to the beginning and go to zero and zero. And now we have our animated letter boxes just using the keyframing from the properties panel. So another way you can crop is by creating a picture in picture effect, right? But what if you want to have a nice outline and some curved edges? So in my videos, I have a circular a picture in picture. So we're going to go to the shape tool and instead of using the ellipse tool like I use, let's use the rectangle tool. So we're just going to generally click and drag to create our shape over our talking head and then move our graphic in place so it meets the duration of our video. Now we can go to the properties panel. So then with the rounded corner tool, you can click and drag to increase how much of a round edge that you want. Let's say around here is good. So once we have that, now we have to make our video basically be inside of the shape. So to do that, select our video clip of our talking head and let's go to effects and let's search for track mat key and let's drag and drop this onto our video clip. And now we need to go to effect controls and change our track mat key to video layer three. So basically what that does is it places my video inside of the shape, kind of like a clipping mask in Photoshop. So now we can see the video on video layer one is now revealed because our talking head is inside of that shape. But now what if you want to create an outline around our shape? So what we can do is actually move these layers up and this will actually mess up the track mat key. So you'll need to go back and say we want it to be video layer four now. And now we need to duplicate our shape by pressing option or alt on a PC and drag it down to video layer two here. And then from properties, what we can do is select our shape and then undo the fill and instead add a stroke. And now we have this tiny little white outline, which is nice. We can choose five. We can choose 10 if we want to, to make it thicker. You can also change whatever color that you want here. It can be a green color. It can be a yellow color. I'm just going to keep mine white. Another thing you can think about is if you want it to be outer or centered or inner, which actually doesn't work in this case because of our track mat key. In this case, I'm just going to use outer. You can also add a second stroke if you want to, which can be a different color. So you can have two different strokes here, depending on what you're going for. In this case, I'm just going to subtract that second stroke. Another thing you might be wondering is how do you move these three different layers as if it's, you know, one object? What we can do is nest it. So we can select all of these layers here, one, two, three, without the background, of course, and we can go ahead and nest it and we can just call it React Cam. And then with this one layer, we can use the properties panel to scale it down if we want to reposition it in the center, or maybe we want to move it over to the right and up. 
So using this technique, you can crop and split up your videos in creative ways. You can really get creative here. So I really hope that you found this video useful. If you want more videos like this, where I show many different creative ways of using one particular effect, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning more about masking, you can check out this video here for six creative ways to mask in Premiere Pro. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Whoop.